Sure, Steve. So look, the, the deep state, the intelligence community, they can play defense, they can play offense. And we're seeing both of those like in conjunction with each other. They're playing defense against Comer's committee to try to stop the American people from reading the whistleblower document about the bribery allegation. And the American people need to see it. And the committee can't just uh, allow itself to be brushed away with uh, the idea of, well, you know, all the Republicans could look at it because it's still going to lead to Raskin and other Democrats saying, well, you have the wrong interpretation of it. The people have to see it for themselves. So that's the defensive play. The offensive play is against President Trump. And look, I'm not a man who's given to exaggeration, Steve. In fact, I took some heat on Twitter yesterday for, uh, you know, kind of uh, modulating things, right, as opposed to like really coming head on. So let me come head on and say, look, I think H- hang that on, the Republican- hang on. Yo, yo, bro, bro, bro. Bro, you're 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 in the war room. I do the exaggeration. You're my straight man. <laughs> so Clark, <laughs> Clark's as straight as you get. That you're never going to get an exaggeration out of him. But, but go for it, bro. Well, what I'm going to say, Steve, is look, I think that the republic is really under attack with this offensive attack on President Trump. They want to take him out, as you said. They don't want him running. And they have to deep six him because he is the one who represents reform and represents a challenge to their authority and an ability to to, uh, to scale back the uh, intelligence state we have. So what are they doing? They're using you know, one of the tools they know best. They're trying to use the, the Espionage Act. In recent weeks, you've heard repeatedly about this uh, call that President Trump had talking about a Mark Milley plan to invade Iran, uh, and that uh, he talked about that with unauthorized people, and then DOJ called for the document, and when the document was called for, you know, it couldn't be found. And so I see now uh, triangulating in on various things, and it's all caused by leaks, right? There are no leaks against Biden, no leaks against Pence. Those operations are sealed up tighter than a drum, but leaks against Trump are constant and daily, and they really should be disciplined. But put the leaks to the side. Let me talk about how I think they're trying to gear up to use the Espionage Act. And I do have the, the statute, if you could call that up, uh, Denver, the uh, the Espionage Act. So you'll yeah, see ahead. when it uh, gets- We can pull it up, yeah. You'll see if you look at the first, uh, there are two subsections I have, which I think are the main two that they're drilling in on now. In the first one, subsection E, what they're saying is that, you know, President Trump is uh, sharing national defense information with unauthorized individuals. And then subsection F, the second one, talks about how uh, the, uh, you know, information potentially has been lost. Right. So I think this is these are the the one two punch under the Espionage Act. I think that they're lining up based on all the leaks. And, you know, this is uh, something that I think has serious constitutional problems as applied to the president because it ignores his uh, his. uh, commander in chief powers under the Constitution, and it also is something that I think they've they've landed upon because if you look at that statute, if you look at the Espionage Act, 18 uh, U.S.C. 793, and the, again subsections E and F especially, you'll see that there's no mention in there of classified information. They want to sidestep that fight and sidestep whether Trump declassified the relevant information. The magic language there is national defense information, so that's why they've highlighted this uh, Iran situation uh, and, and, uh, and, and talk that they have a tape recording of because they want to say that that is national defense information. And, you know, nice try, uh, Trump lawyers, but uh, talking about uh, classified information is neither here nor there under this statute. Um, I don't think that that's going to work. I think that that ignores uh, several things, especially the president's uh, uh, commander in chief powers. But uh, I think that's where they're headed. So I think it's important for your viewers to know that. And then second, I I think that, look, the more specific statute than the Espionage Act, which is highly general and, uh, you know, in the relevant provisions doesn't mention the president or his special status, is the Presidential Records Act. And you've heard about the sock drawer case, uh, which involved this historian that Clinton had tag around with him and record him, you know, operating in the presidency. And then the fact that Judicial Watch tried to get the documents from that. So yeah. there are two quotations. But hang, hang that on a second. But, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Give me the quote. No, I just want to give you this, this graphic quickly, right? Yep. The two key okay. quotations from this sure. 
are NARA does not have the tapes in question. These were Clinton tapes. And NARA lacks any right, duty, or means to seize control over them. This is precisely why, and I did a past appearance on this with you, Steve, that they use this special access program to have Biden uh, be the yes. one to, to delve into that. They lied about that. The second thing is, look at the second quotation. The key part of that is, the D.C. Circuit left untouched the portion of Armstrong 1, that's a prior D.C. Circuit appellate precedent, that gave the president unfettered control over his own documents. So this is something that they is kryptonite for them, right? Under the Presidential Records Act, kryptonite. the president can make these calls. He does make these calls. And he is the one who is empowered to do that. And back when you were talking about getting access to Clinton records, Clinton tape recordings, oh, of course, then, you know, a, a, a Democrat-appointed judge, you know, weighs in and says, hey, NARA, they can't sort of second-guess what President Clinton decided to do with his own documents. But, of course, when we come to President Trump, we get a total double standard, and we have, uh, you know, Biden pulling out all the stops to go after President Trump. So, you know, the exaggeration point uh, that, that I, you know, uh, you're, you're sort of waving me off a little bit on, but I, I do want to make is, look, if the intelligence community can do this to a president and frustrate the democratic choice, the unfettered democratic choice in 2024 as to who the American people want to be their president, you know, we're really done for. We don't have a republic anymore. So the republic is hanging by a thread, Steve, and we need to keep the flame of the republic alive. And I think people need to register their objections to the Justice Department and with their representative in Congress to push back on the Justice Department against this totally illegitimate play that they have lined up that they think will, you know, do in Trump once and yeah. for all. And there's a constant, there, there's a direct linkage back to the nullification, as I called it uh, with President Trump, I told him at the time, it's the nullification project from 16. Th those are all in a, in, a, in a direct line with many of the same people. I just want to make sure people understand two things. Uh, number one, this espionage act on this recording they cut a couple of weeks ago, that's where they're jumping and getting the grand juries and getting people in Florida and all this, blah, 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 blah. Because they didn't have, you have to have a crime to do your obstruction. And right. Jeff Clark just rolled out why, why the Presidential Records Act, which they've done for a year. Remember, we are 10 months into this. And Mike Davis, on the afternoon of 8 August in the year of our Lord, 2022, on this show, told you, what Jeff Clark has just reiterated right here, they got nothing, and they ain't going to get nothing. There's nothing here, okay? This whole espionage act just came out. No, this is all because of this new thing with Iran. It just came out the same, and that's where they're running around. They're skipping around because they think they got something, something to hook and then do the obstruction. Jeff Clark, the question we have to you, are we hurtling towards a constitutional crisis, sir? Steve, I, I think that we are. I think that uh, these folks, you know, when they're in defensive mode, I think they're best called the Praetorian Guard. But I think when they're in this mode, they're the ones who are engaged in a, in a coup, Steve. I mean, the you know, we had uh, Inspector General Horowitz reveal that the whole uh, Russiagate operation was a soft coup, right? But he, he held back and he said, well, you know, the FBI had some predication to go forward on that. Durham totally blew that up, but Durham is still keeping uh, a lid on various things, right? Although he told us about an August 2016 meeting in the Oval Office where Obama himself is told about Hillary Clinton plans to, to, to run this nullification project, essentially, with this bogus idea that President Trump was a Russian agent. And I think they were part of that operation, and I don't think Durham really got to the bottom of that. So we, we just have a continuation of, I think, uh, you know, what, what with Russiagate was a soft coup, but this idea of trying to put President Trump in jail, that's much more like a hard coup, and particularly because it's going to try to steal a choice away from the American people as to the front-running candidate, I think, in the entire election. And, you know, your polling that you have on from Rasmussen shows that.